Hello everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. The topic today is one that you have helped me with. It is about asking for help. Now, I reached out to our YouTube community. We have a community page there where we can talk and ask questions of each other. And I just said, I'm doing this article, this video on um, asking for help. And I want your help because I, because I, I need to understand what your what your feelings are so many women came back to, to give feedback and I have to appreciate I have to give my acknowledgement and thanks they were so helpful and the, the bottom line was this most women in their 60s um, are have, you know lived a life that's full of complexity and challenges and have learned to be self-sufficient most um, most of the women are there for um, themselves they know how to, to manage stress they know how to manage uh, situations and they're doing okay, they're resilient, they're strong. But some said that they are looking for help, they, they, they sometimes need, need help, physical or emotional or, or otherwise, and they've either been rejected, people just will not help them, or they feel that they just, um, you know, they, they, they're just embarrassed to ask or they don't wanna be in, uh, imposed on someone. There's like all these little barriers why they don't reach out for help. And so I thought the reason that this all came about, to be honest with you, was that I was thinking about, um, the, um, it was a, who was it? It was a person on TikTok, I think, who was talking about when you reach the end of your life, you, there's a time in your life where you are going to have to ask for help. And she was saying that a lot of women <clears throat> come into the hospice environment um, or into the hospitals and they, they don't have anybody to help. They don't know who to, to reach out to. And they, you know, it's, it's a more difficult situation if you haven't got the ability to surrender, to, 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 to ask of help from people. And when I <clears throat> heard that article, when I heard her talking about that, I, I thought to myself, it's true. Uh, all of us, so we're, you know, we're, going, we're not getting any younger, as they say, and we are um, you know, going to be dealing with uh, physical mobility issues, perhaps, or you know, clarity issues, or, um, things that we don't understand, or you know, just needing to navigate this world as we get a little bit older. It may not be for another 10, 15, 20 years for most of you, and that's totally fine. But it was just the, 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 the idea that at some point, we are gonna probably need to ask for help. And is it a good idea to get used to that? Yeah, I mean, the world, okay, so the world celebrates strength, right? The world right now is celebrating youth and strength and reliance and self-sufficiency. And that's um, just the message, that's the narrative. That's the narrative of our, of our lives, that, you know, asking for help is, well, you've got lots of places you can go for help. You don't need to ask me. You know, even younger people now, I've noticed, don't, I mean, this is really strange, but they don't ask for a seat to someone on the bus. They, they've not been taught that older people might need help. And it's not that every single person who looks at their over 50 has to be out offered a seat, but if someone's got a walker or they're, you know, they're, they're showing a bit of frailty, you know, it's not, it's a, it's a good idea to say, you know, I mean, any, in some way, women may even ask, may I, may I have that seat? May I please sit down? But would you do that? Would you ask for help in that situation? So I think there's a couple of things that I want to reassure you about because um, even though I'm starting this in a, not a negative way, but in a way that you know it's inevitable that at some point we're going to need to ask for some help, even if it's only for a short time, or maybe you've had some me uh, and a medical uh, situation, or you've you know your mobility is limited for a short time. You know, being able to accept those meals that people are making for you, or even ask, can you pick up some food for me at the shop? Can you do this, please? I need, I, I can't, you know, my my, I'm, my my difficulty with walking is, is impacting that right now. And, you know, have a, have a dialogue, have a narrative that can have, where you can ask for help. So I think the key thing to remember here is that asking for help, in my opinion, this is all my opinion, of course, is not a sign of weakness. It is not a sign of vulnerability. It is, for me, a sign of strength. It's a sign of knowing that there is something right now that you are, it's not within your knowledge, your strength, your uh, understanding to do. Now, you may need to pay for someone to do this. I mean, it may be you need some shelving put up in your house and your children are living in different state or you don't have any uh, a husband or partner or you just, you know, you, it's hard. Or you may want to make a piece of Ikea furniture or something. But, you know, those things you can get a helper. You can get someone to help you and you can pay them. And those resources are all online 
and you know it's, it's, it's easy to do so accepting that sometimes physical assistance is needed but there's no harm in asking a neighbor or a, you know a, a, a young person that you know that you chat with someone that you know and that can, can give you a hand with mowing your lawn or or taking care of your garden or you know even just dropping you off at a, a, a doctor's appointment or um you know just just doing something that you need something that you need help with and I think that recognizing that it's a sign of strength of character, that you are able to admit and be open to that. It's just beautiful. I think it's really, really a strength, not a vulnerability or, or a weakness. Um, I think this, the heart, somehow the heart of this is dependence. And um, I think that, you know, we've been told maybe throughout our lives that <clears throat> if we have to ask for help, we're not independent anymore. But somehow that independence that we have fought for that you know is now switched to dependence you know i can't i just, I just as just as i'm doing this video i just got um, a message on my phone because my messages come up as i'm doing the videos from someone who is I'm, i won't mention her name but it's someone in our our patreon group and she's just sent me a message um just i'm not sure what the message said but um it reminded me that this person has been dealing with a chronic pain situation for the last year I think it was an accident or something happened and that, she, that she's now dealing with a chronic illness. And the, one of the conversations that we've been having in our 60 and Me Friendship Lounge, which is, a, which is an exclusive lounge we do with our Patreon supporters, um, she's been talking about this and how it's been scaring her because she's feeling like she's losing her autonomy. She's losing her independence. And just a couple of weeks ago, she, she decided to go to uh, on a trip. And she, you know, she got it all organized and she needed to just move to feel that she hadn't lost her independence. And maybe that's something we have to do sometimes. So we can see it as a means of empowering ourselves, I think, to move forward. And um, I, I do want to talk about that rejection thing, though, because I think that's that's actually part of uh, this woman reminding me of it, too, is that um, her family isn't close to her. So she's uh, not able to, um, you know, sort of just pick up the phone and, and, and say, hey, can, can you give me with this? And I think in the past, um, she and other people have mentioned this too, um, have asked for help. And then the person will actually say, oh, you can do that yourself. Come on, you know, it, it's no problem. It's easy. And or, or he said, um, you know, I'm busy. And you know, they're not. They're just not helpful. They just don't want to be helpful to you. And that rejection that I think was the number one thing that came up in the comments that you left for me on the community page that is that, that prevents you from asking for help now. I mean, and that's understandable. And if someone says to you, no, like if your own family says they, they can't help you with putting up a, some shelving or, you know, when they're in town, they can't do some shopping for you. Um, it's really, um, you know, challenging and, and that can hold you back. But one of the other things that I wanted to talk about, and I've just done another video on, on this recently about community. And this is the time to start building your community of helpers. You know, if you right now, I mean, okay, um, think of an example. I mean, a lot of people live in, the, in rural areas where they have to actually drive a car or go on public transport to get food. So, you know, to, maybe it's time to start building a community of, uh, you know, ordering things to be delivered or doing some little things that you wouldn't ever think of doing in the past, but, you know, maybe now building a community of supporters that you can call on. Find that handy person, you know, that person that can, you know, fix something that maybe, what, what was recently, <laughs> something happened, my curtains, oh, my curtain rod fell down and I had to, and it was really hard. I couldn't figure out how to do it, but I, I, I did in the end, but, you know, or building a community of like people to call if you need your windows washed or, you know, so that you know that it's okay to say at some point, I need help with this and I'm going to call that person to help me with it. I know that that's my community. That's the people that understand the value of sharing. And sometimes it can be, um, you know, in a community, if you're living in a community, and that's actually even another topic I suppose we can talk about because um, I think the women that are living in retirement homes, uh, from my experience, have been like the most independent and strong women ever because they, they just know that, that even that step to a retirement home is a step towards needing help. And so they, they double down on getting stuff done. It's a, it's a very interesting and complex uh, story. Open communications is a big thing. You know, talk to people about this. If you, if you know that you're going to need help with something when you travel, you know, make it known in advance. So for example, um, I was um, traveling on a train. Um, I, I think you all know I went on a, a cruise and went to visit some family in uh, Scotland. And um, I was I was carrying a small suitcase, but it got heavy on my trip back because I had bought a few extra things. And I got, I got on the train 
and this uh, this man uh, he wasn't he was a young person you know 30 40 year old person said can i help you trigger warning trigger warning the word help help and my my first inclination was no it's okay i got it you know and i said yeah i could use your help that would be great and he just was, whoop, lifted it up and it was like it was done and i thought that was a, a, a turning point so when i came back home i had a chat with my son here because i said i realized something on this trip about travel that i can't do it all myself sometimes and you know, he said, yeah, that's a really good thing to, to realize. I'm 74. I mean, I'm not going to be lifting big, heavy suitcases all my life. I mean, that's just how it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe some of you have done you know, weightlifting and you're very strong and you'll be able to do it. But anyway, the person is, uh, the, 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 the end of this conversation is about education, finding the groups that can support you, going online to, to get connected to people that you know you can ask for help, finding some people that you can pay to do certain things if you have a handyman or window washer or gardener or whatever, and being prepared. You know, just be prepared. Have some extra food in the cupboard. Um, you know, be knowledgeable about how to do certain basic things around the house, like where the plugs are, you know, where the, so that you can handle and, and don't need help with some of these basic things. But, you know, take proactive, um, um, you know, actions and be nurturing to yourself. Have some self-compassion, people. I mean, know that you're not going to be, you know, able to do everything forever. And there will be a time when you'll surrender. And that's okay. So I think that, Hopefully that's been helpful. If it reflects your situation and your story, please leave your comments in the section below. If you like this video, would you do me a huge favor and just like it, like even a, a, that little thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel here, go ahead and do that. Um, you know, we do videos four times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and they're all on topics like this and interesting, useful things, you know, and how to's. So look forward to hearing your feedback on this topic. I know it's been an important one, a bit of a long video. I apologize. But um, anyway, I'm here for you. You're here for me. We're here to help each other. Let's make it work. Take care, everybody. Lots of love.